Peter, what are you doing in bed at this time? Are you a woman who should go to bed this early in the evening? No wonder your age mates are there building mansions for their parents, and all you could do is carry yourself around like a woman. Mother, I did a lot of hard work today, and I am tired. I want to go to sleep on time so that I can regain my strength. Which hard work? Did anybody force you into carrying blocks to developers? Didn't you go to school? Were you supposed to be doing a menial job with all the certificates you have? Or did you decide not to be ashamed at all? Mother, what do you want me to do? I haven't gotten a job yet, so I decided to do it instead of staying idle. At least we are eating from there. Peter, who did this to you? Can you hear yourself? You were carrying blocks for your age mates that were building houses in the name of you having not found a job. How will you find a good job when you are not working hard for it? Those your age mates that are having good jobs and making their parents happy, did they have two heads, Peter? Mother I can't kill myself, as our faces are different, so our destinies and time are assigned to each and every one of us. I believe that when it is the right time, I will get a job. Go ahead and be sleeping, and keep carrying blocks for your age mates that are building mansions for their parents. Nonsense. Why is it that my mother doesn't see anything I do as a good thing? There is nothing I do that pleases her anymore. If I sleep, she will abuse me. If I eat, she will abuse me. If I stay at home, she will abuse me. If I go out and come back, she will abuse me. Am I the first person who has reached the age to do well but is not doing well? If I had known, I would not have named him Peter. I don't know whether that name I gave him makes him senseless. I am beginning to think of it. Look at all his age mates. They are all doing very well. Why can't Peter do well? Is it that whenever he goes for a good job, the job will see him and run away? Upon all those certificates he has, do you know I was thinking by now he would have been carrying money in cartons, building houses, with so many cars and his family? Oh no, I regret wasting my money on him. Yes come in. Good morning, Mommy Peter. Good morning. You are welcome. Please sit down. Thank you. You're welcome. I hope there's no problem. No problem at all. I came to invite you to my son's wedding in two days. You mean your son is getting married? I can't believe it. Such a young boy. My sister, he has reached the age and is doing well, so he should settle down, which will make him more responsible. You are right. I am happy for him. Congratulations. Thank you, and I will be expecting you. No problem, I will come. Then I will take my leave. So that her son is finally getting married, who is this lucky girl? But come to think of it, Peter, my son is senior to that boy, and yet he has achieved so much in his young age. Oh! Her mother will be very proud of her. I can see it in her eye as she was talking to me. Anyway, why won't she be? Is she the one that makes my own son not be successful like his age mates? Only God knows why Peter refuses to be useful to himself. Look at the little boy he saw when his mother gave birth to him. He is now getting married after achieving so much. He has built a house, bought land here and there, and even bought a car for his mother. My own son can't even give me enough money to cook a good meal, let alone buy a car for me. If only I could see God, I would have asked him why he gave me Peter as a son. I am never last in my own time. In fact, I did better than my age mate. Why is Peter not like me? Or did they change him in the hospital I gave birth? It is possible. Nothing is impossible, because he didn't take after me or his father. Only God knows who he took after. Good morning, mother. Is there any other thing you know how to do, apart from greet, and eat my food, then go out and come back? Mother, what did I do again to warrant your abuse this early morning? I just greeted you. Is it a crime to greet you, mother? So you don't know your greeting to me is a crime? and you are here asking me what you have done. In fact, I should be the one asking you what I have done to you that makes you decide not to make me proud as a mother. Did I offend you in any way? Didn't I send you to school? I even sold my wrapper just to make sure I saw you through your education. So in what area have I offended you, Peter? Why have you decided not to make me proud as a mother? Mother, I don't understand you. 
Am I not trying my best? Even though I don't have a good job yet, I make sure I provide for us. What else do you want me to do? Are we not eating very well in this house? Can you hear yourself? Who told you we have been eating very well? Who told you you were trying? Don't you see Paul, Veronica's son? He has built a house for his mother and changed their lives. Is he not your age mate? Didn't the two of you finish school at the same time? Are you not seeing him, or have you decided not to have shame? Why is it that when it comes to you, it's all about, mother leave me to wait for God's time? I am trying my best. I cannot fight God or kill myself. Who did this to you? I don't know what you want. Should I fight God to bless me when he has not decided to bless me? Or have you forgotten that it is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich, and he adds no sorrow to it? Proverbs 10, verse 22. For I know he has plans for me, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give me a future and hope. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. So, mother, please stop frustrating me. Allow me to wait for God's time. When Peter? Are you not ashamed of deceiving yourself? But do not forget this one thing, dear friends, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. 2 Peter 3, verses 8-9. So, when the time is right, God will do it. Oh no, who did this to me? I am so ashamed to face my fellow woman, whose sons are successful. All the time, they keep calling me for celebrations. Why can't I call them, even if it is for once? Mother, please stop. I don't have time for this. This is early morning. Did you walk out on me? Peter, how dare you? You must have time for me, because I am tired of watching a son I suffered so much to train become nothing before my very eyes. It will never happen. Never. What is all this? My mother doesn't see me as a useful son. She never regards me as a son. To her, I am useless. I don't rest for her just because I have not built a mansion, bought cars for her, and thrown money around. Then she will see me as a successful son. Should I go and steal so that she will be happy? Every day this person's son builds mansions, the other person's son buys whom are jeeps, and my own son is not useful. That is all she talks about. I cannot be near my mother without her comparing me with her friend's children, which always frustrates me. Am I the only person who has not started throwing money around since that is what they call being successful? This house will not enter me and him. This is my husband's house. Let him go and build his own house. I am tired of sharing my husband's house with him while he stays useless. After all, my husband was not up to his age when he built this house and yet he is not ashamed of himself. Of all his age mates, there is none that has not built a house, and they are still doing well. Why is Peter different? The same school they attended is the same school I sent him. Why can't he make me proud as a mother? I am beginning to think it is not ordinary, but whatever it is, I will scatter it and uproot it out of him. A beg, let me go and eat so that I can go and look for ways to earn a living before my mother gives me high blood pressure. I can't kill myself. He is not married yet, and it's not even touching him. He doesn't have children. All his age mates have all married with children, and they still do well, so why can't he succeed? Who is he feeding? I think I know the cause of it. I am letting him eat my food, and in his heart, he thought I was his wife. That is why he is not showing any concern about getting his own family, and that will end today. Let him go and marry if he must eat. In fact, let me go and lock my kitchen. Peter, what are you doing in my kitchen? Mother, I want to eat something so that I can go and find work to do. How dare you enter my kitchen? Am I your wife? If you want to eat, why not get married so that your wife can cook for you? Or are you not old enough to marry? All your age mates are married and still doing fine. Why is your own case different? Listen. Let it be first and last, you enter my kitchen to take my food again in this house. Go and be useful to yourself. Mother, why are you treating me like a sif? I am useless. Wait, so you don't know you are useless? What are you good at if not eating my food, 
sleeping in my husband's house, waking up, and deceiving yourself with that good-for-nothing job you were doing that kept you the way you are? Am I not the one giving you money to cook in this house? Mother, what is it? Why can't I rest for you? Should I kill myself because I am not rich? Why are you frustrating me? Kill yourself if you want, and be useful. That is all I want. What you came to this world to do is not manage to give me a little money that is not enough to buy anything. Your age mates gave their mothers money to buy food in large quantities. In your own case, I must add money before I can buy anything. I am tired. Did you hear that? Oh no. Nonsense. Go and be useful. I don't know why my mother refuses to let me have peace in my father's house. Am I the only person who is not doing well? Is it late for me? What is all this? Every time she keeps calling me names, because I am not rich, if I had my way, I would have left that house for her so that I could rest. Peter, where are you going with so much anger on your face? I just left the house to avoid my mother's problem. He has started again. There is no day she doesn't compare me with her friend's sons, who are doing well. Am I not trying my best? Why can't she have patience for me? Am I the one who stops myself from getting rich? Why can't she understand? I am losing it. There is nothing I do for her that she will appreciate just because I am not rich. What is all this? In the morning, she abuses me. In the afternoon, she calls me useless. In the night, she calls me good for nothing. There is no time she doesn't know what to call me. Calm down, Peter, and don't let her words get into you. You won't understand, my mother is pushing me to war. I don't know what I did to her. Once she sets her eye on me, she will behave as if she has set her eye on an abomination. Everything about me annoys her. Just because I have not started carrying a bag of money to her, what kind of mother is she? Oh no. Money has insulted me? If I had made money, my mother would have been proud of me as a son. Why can't God bless me so that I will rest for my mother? I am tired. It's okay, Peter. Take it easy on yourself. Don't forget who God is. He is God that does with time. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. There is an appointed time for everything. And there is a time for every event under heaven. Remember when God told Abraham he would bless him with a son? He did, even though it tarried, but it came to pass. It is never too late with God. Hebrews 10, verse 36. For you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. Romans 5 verses 3 to 4. How I wish my mother would understand this and stop frustrating me. She has frustrated me to the point that I no longer know what to think of anymore. I have started seeing myself as worthless. Now, I know why some people are into bad doing, some parents are the cause, I am beginning to think of any possible way to make money so that I can rest for my mother. Never allow anyone to take you away from the presence of God. Never allow anyone to frustrate you into doing bad things. To be successful is not to be rich. A successful person is one who knows his God, fears him, obeys his commands, and walks uprightly. A successful person is not a person who possesses the whole earth and has all he wants but, at the end, loses his soul, as the Bible says in Mark 8 verses 36 to 37. For what shall it profit a man, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And you know the answer is nothing. What matters is how well you live. It is not how much you have. Just pray to God to open your mother's eye to understand that life is not about material things of the earth, but where we spend eternity after we cross over, and anyone who merits heaven after death is a rich person. Don't allow anyone to frustrate you into doing bad things to make money, be it a mother, father, sister, wife, or husband. This is because there is no excuse for sin, and the soul who sins is the one who will die. A son will not bear the iniquity of his father, and a father will not bear the iniquity of his son. The righteousness of the righteous man will fall upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked man will fall upon him. Ezekiel 18, verse 20. Hell has no escape. Don't forget that. Earth is not our home. Don't forget that. We will leave all we gather on earth behind. Don't forget that. How long we stay on earth is unknown to us. 
Don't forget that. Our journey on Earth can end any time. It could be now, in a minute, in an hour, in a day, in a week, in a month, or even in a year or more. No one knows. If you know all this, you won't engage in evil or allow anyone to frustrate you into doing bad. I have suffered at the hands of my mother because I am not rich. Sometimes I ask myself, why am I like this? Peter, earthly riches are not considered to be rich because we do not belong here. Whatever we gather here will end here on earth, but whatever we gather in heaven remains permanent. It will never end, and it will never finish. You see, that is why whoever makes heaven is a successful person. So a successful person is one whose name is written in the book of life. It is not one who achieves a lot on earth. Of what use is it for us to put our hands in evil just to please someone and gather all we want just to leave them in a short time, and then open our eyes just to find out we are already facing eternity and then look only for us to discover it is in hell? It isn't worth it. Make heaven your target and forget about earthly possession. Then whenever it pleases God to make you live on earth comfortable, so be it. But never sowed your hands in evil just to acquire riches. Those who did regretted it. Remember, money is not success. Being successful means realizing your purpose on earth, who you are, the reason God sent you here on earth, what he wants you to do, finding it out, and pursuing it until the end of the journey on earth. That is success. If you have all the money without doing the work of God in your life, it is useless and worthless. Money has no value to give and cannot defend you after earth. We become worthless if we die in sin. A rich man in heaven is the real rich man, and don't forget that anyone who makes heaven is a successful person. Thank you very much. I think I feel better now. Let me be going. I pray he doesn't start thinking negatively just to please her mother. This is why a lot of young men and women are into ritualism, armed robbery, and all sorts of atrocities just to make money. It is a result of desperate parents, who do nothing but abuse, frustrate, compete, and compare their children to others. They don't regard any of their children that are not rich, even though those ones are upright in everything. They prefer those that bring them all they want, not minding how they make it, which makes those upright ones feel rejected, worthless and desperate to go to any length to be rich so that they will get praise and be regarded. This shouldn't be so. Everyone should be treated equally, whether rich or not. Parents, stop frustrating your children and comparing them to successful ones for whom you don't know the source of their income. Every parent should remember that they will give an account of how they train their children on the day of judgment. A successful person or child is not the one who is rich, but the one who walks uprightly. If everyone had God-fearing parents, a lot of evil as a result of bad upbringing and abuse from parents would have been avoided, the world would have had less evil, and our young men and women wouldn't have been desperate for riches. I hope I don't meet her when I get home. Going home scares me because of the way my mother will welcome me. I am scared of the sign she will make when she sees me. I am scared of her frowning and her face siding at me. I am scared of begging my own mother to give me food to eat while she says no to me. If I have money, she will be the one asking me if I am hungry. I am scared of her not responding to my greeting and abusing me. Instead, I am scared of her using every small mistake I make as an opportunity to remind me how worthless I am. Oh! God, give me money so that I will be proud to go home. I want my mother to see me and say, Welcome, son, with a smile on her face. I want to be the son she is proud of, and I am tired of her seeing me as a worthless son. I am tired of her calling me good for nothing, just because I don't have money. Her abuse and the names she calls me are affecting me, but I know I am not worthless. It is only money I don't have. Please God bless me. My sister I am happy you came to see me. You are welcome. Thank you. What about your son? I don't know where he went, but he will soon be back. Auntie, you came. Yes Peter, I just asked about you. How are you? I am fine. Auntie, you are welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, mother. Nonsense. Auntie, I will be in my room. No problem. I will see you later. And listen, Peter, I don't want to see your leg in my kitchen. Let it not be that you came back because of my food. I hope you heard me. All right. Good for nothing. All he knows how to do is eat, that's all. But sister, I don't like the way you talk to him. He is no longer a child to talk to like that. He should eat when he is hungry. Let him go and marry if he wants to eat. He is not useful to me. 
There is nothing he is good at other than eating my food. Sister he is your son? At least he is bringing something home. He is not lazy. He is trying his best. That he has not hit it big doesn't mean he is useless. How is he trying? I sold my wrapper to send him to school. And after everything I suffered in his head, all he could do is leave me with nothing. All his age mates who are building mansions for their parents, are they more educated than he is? Why can't he be useful like them? Sister, he is useful. Money is not usefulness. He is responsible. He is hardworking. He is God-fearing. He conducts himself very well. He doesn't steal. He is not a womanizer. He is not a drunker. He doesn't smoke. What else makes someone useful that he doesn't have, is it because he is not rich? It is not late for him. Please take it easy with him. You trained him. Yes, it is your responsibility. He never forces you to bring him into this world. So stop frustrating your son. God time is the best, or do you want him to be involved in bad behavior just because of money? All his age mates who buy cars and build mansions for their parents were involved in bad doing, is that what you are saying? Why must he be different? Please stop defending him. I don't like it. I suffer so much for him. To whom much is given, much is expected. Then take it easy and pray for him, encourage him, and show him love. That is what you should do as a mother. You are not to condemn, frustrate, and abuse him just because he has not made money like others. You are pushing him to evil, or would you rather want him to use you for ritual? Shouldn't you be happy that he has patience enough to wait for God's time? Shouldn't you be happy that he is not ashamed of who he is? Being a parent doesn't give you the right to frustrate your children or mislead them. Remember, God is watching, Colossians 3 verse 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. 1 Peter 5, verses 2-3 Although God gave you the children to take care of them, you shouldn't be the Lord over them. God did not send children to you so that you could use them to gather the whole earth, or fight your enemy, just like many parents do. He gave them to you so that you could show them the way of the cross. You should be encouraging your son to follow the way of the Lord. You are not to push him away from God by making him prioritize earthly achievement above God. Many young men are into occultism and ritualism as a result of the humiliation and insults they get from their parents because they are not rich. Parents should remember that God will hold them accountable. Enough of that, please. You are saying all this because your son is doing well. If you had been in my shoes, you would have done the same. Stop all this pretense. There are no parents who will claim they are happy if their son is not doing well. God forbid that I should frustrate my son because of money. Money is not being successful. You know what? Thank you for coming to visit me. You can now go back. At least you can see I am fine. Are you sending me out of your house? <clears throat> Mother, you're going out. Should I not go out? Anyway, my friend invited me to her son's new house opening ceremony. What can I do? Of course I have to go. After all, she is not the one who made my own son useless. Oh no, mother, must you insult me? I am just being concerned. Why the insult? I did not insult you. I just told you the truth, and nothing but the truth. That reminds me, your food is in the kitchen. Go ahead and eat before going to carry block for your fellow man. At least, that is the only thing you know how to do. Excuse me. Oh God. Why have you forsaken me? Is it not time you remembered me? In fact, I have had enough of this pain. I have to make this money by all means. I must be like my fellow men. I must be rich. Come son, come rain. I can't continue struggling. When is it going to end? I have tried every struggle I know, yet I never make it. Enough, please. My mother was right, those that are carrying money up and down, do they have two heads? Are they not men like me? Why must my own be different? Why must I be like this? I am going to find out what they do that gives them so much money, and I don't care what it is. 
as long as it makes me money, I will do it. I am old enough to build my own house, have as many cars as I want, and even have my own children and wife, and that I must have. Come rain or come shine, even if it means killing, I don't mind. Now, you are talking, don't worry. I will help you. Is that not Peter, my classmate? Enough is enough. Peto, my man. Danny, is that you or am I dreaming? My guy, it is me. How are you doing? What are you doing in this big mansion? Danny, this is not your parents house. This is one of my houses. I came to check if the contractors, I gave the job to, did a good job so that I could give them more to build for me. Please don't be offended. I want to hear you well. You say this is one of your houses, meaning you have another apart from this. Of course, I have about five of them, and I am planning to make it ten, then I will start other things. Please show me the way. I have suffered enough. Let me shine a little. Please don't say no. Do you know that ever since I finished my education, I haven't gotten a good job? Don't worry, Peter, I will help you. After all, you are my man. Thank you so much. My mother was right. Money is sweet. Peter, I will tell you the truth. We are kidnappers. What? You mean that is what you do for a living? Yes, our job is to find out about rich people, trace them, inform others, and then carry out the operation. In fact, I don't mind as long as there is money there. I am in. If it is money, you don't have a problem. Before one month, you are in money. Please, all my body, from head to toe, including my heart, is in. Then let's go. We already have some people in our custody. Please don't kill me. Just cooperate if you want to live. Otherwise, you are dead. This is our hideout. I can see it. Thank you so much for showing me the way. Now call your father and be fast about it. Sir please, sir please. What is she doing? Why is she wasting time? It seems like you people are taking it easy on her. Don't worry, I will handle it. Call your parents. Call your parents and stop wasting time. That was the instruction. I will, I will. Nonsense. <laughs> Finally, I have made it. Mother, your son has made it. Thank you, God, my precious son is back. Son, I am so happy. You are finally making me proud, now I can walk like a queen, like my fellow woman. You can say that again, mother. In fact, I am going to buy you a car tomorrow. I can see everything turning around for me. Son, please go in and let me bring your food. I know you must have been hungry by now. Don't worry, I made your favorite as if I knew you were coming. That is my mother, the best cook. Yes, my wonderful son, your mother is the best cook, that reminds me of two people who came looking for you one week ago. They said you submitted an application letter to their company and that you have been approved. No, mother, your son has passed that level. I am now a millionaire. People should be working for me, not me working for people. Now go in and eat and rest. All right, mother. Where are those big pieces of meat in my pot? Come out, my son is back. Have you found where those criminals are hiding? Yes, sir. We follow them to their hideout, and as we speak, they have a lady they kidnapped yesterday with them. Very good. Today they will pay for all the atrocities they have committed all these years. Now let's go and finish them. Yes, sir. Don't kill me, please, sir. Now behave yourself if you don't want to die here. Okay, sir. I am sorry, sir. You are all surrendered. Hands up, or die. What? How did they find us? How long did I join them to end this way? Oh no. Anyone who tries to run, shoot him down. Oh no, I can't take this shame. My head, my head. Oh no, Peter is gone. I am so happy that my son will be coming back today. That must be him. Son, come in. Your mother is waiting. Officer, what are you doing in my house? Are you Peter's mother? Of course, he is my son. His car is at the police station, and you have to come with us for a further investigation. What did you say, officer? My son is dead. He is one of those kidnappers that are terrorizing this community, and you cannot deny that you don't know what your son was doing when he was alive. 
Oh no, oh no, I have destroyed my son. I have sent my son to an early grave. Why did I ever push him this far? I should have allowed him to be the way he is. Now that he is gone, what am I living for? Don't waste my time, criminal mother. Come to the station and explain yourself. No, no, no. Don't die yet. I am a bad mother. I don't deserve mercy. I shouldn't have allowed my mother's word to push me into bad behavior. There is no excuse for sin. But Hoso shall offend one of these little ones which believing me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Matthew 18 verse 6 to 7. Parents, beware, and children, do not enter the path of the wicked. And do not proceed in the way of evil men. Proverbs 4, verse 14. Be ye angry, and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, and wrath, and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking, be put away from you, with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. If Science 4 verses 26 to 32. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Proverbs 4 verse 23. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe, like, and share. God bless you. And remember Jesus loves you.